Hello YouTube, welcome to Project RSX, we're on episode 4, the last episode I ended up restoring my headlights because they looked a bit dusty, they were looking yellow and uh, hazy so I just fixed that up, made the car look a lot better. This episode is a crazy one, like we run into some problems and you know things we don't expect. I'm just gonna let you guys see for yourself. So just sit back, relax, and let's get on with the show. The whole point of this video is to change the brakes. All right, I'm changing the brake rotors and pads because the car has been sitting for a while and I just wanna make sure that everything is brand new just so I know myself when I changed it. We got the parts here, you know, got some coated rotors, some brake pads, and uh, I just wanted to get the car safe for the road. So that was the whole point of this. So we got our, our wheel lock key here. We got a 19 millimeter socket. I go ahead and I crack free all the lug nuts on the ground first. So that way it makes it a lot easier for me when I lift the car up afterwards and then take it off. <laughs> start with this brake job, see those two bolts, one up top, one in the bottom. We take these off. Shake it and it comes off. You can see there the piston on the brake caliper. It's a little bit rusted. You see the brake pads here? They don't look that bad. They're both wearing evenly, which is good. That's a good sign. Now we got these two bolts. They're a little bit bigger. This socket was a 14 mil that I use. We got these two screws here. This is where things can get complicated. You see these hold down screws on the rotors. They tend to seize. And so what I do here, I hit it with an air hammer. Kind of shakes up the rust. I use an impact driver here and then just knock it with a hammer and it comes off. Have it that way, yeah. Okay. And now this is striking. Oh. Yeah. Rotor comes off right here. The wheel hub, what the rotor sits on, it's dirty. I always clean this. Any brake job, you want to clean this. So the new rotor you put on, it sits on a flat surface. There's no rust that's gonna, you know have high and low spots. We go ahead and take off all of this rust. I'm using a soft disc, you know, we just go ahead and clean that up. Looking good here, I go and compare the rotors. I always do this, you have to do this, man. You're gonna waste your time. I look at the rotor, the new rotor, match it in diameter with the old one just by putting it on top. And then you can see here, it lines up perfectly with the old rotor. So I'm good to go. I'm good to install this. And even the brake pads, we compare them. And then I wanna compress this piston back. So I'm gonna use the old brake pad and I go and compress this. So you guys remember when I said in the beginning of the video that we run into some problems? Well, some of you guys can already put this together. I'm having trouble right now compressing this piston back. And it was at this moment I came to the realization that, wow, I think they're done. They won't go in. That's not good. My brake calipers are seized. <sighs> okay. 
at this point I'm just thinking about everything things just went downhill I was close to being ready to put on my new brake parts I was close to getting this job finished getting brakes on my car and now I realize that all that work I did I have to put everything back on sometimes life is not fair at all I just got this car and unfortunately it's been short-lived I need to let her go I had to go on Kijiji Facebook marketplace I had to put her up for a sale for two hundred dollars plus tax obviously wasn't meant to be and this is just sadly the life of a guy who has ambition and wants to do good wants to create something beautiful out of a vehicle which needed help I'm just I'm, I'm just not that guy you're not that guy pal trust me you're not that guy unfortunately I'm not that guy Now, ladies and gentlemen, I do apologize. I do not know who that person was before this, but obviously he said that he wasn't the guy. Am I the guy? Absolutely. Absolutely. I now realize how much work there is ahead of us. So, I'm not going to waste any more time. You guys hear the music? The music should let you know. It's go time. First things first, brake calipers. I needed new ones, I'm gonna change all four of them. I'm not gonna waste my time and check each one. Might as well just change all of them, right? So four of them came in, rockauto.com. They were uncoated. I wanted to change the color of these before I put them on. So I made them a nice fire red RSX Type S Super Premium Sporty Red. Before I could put them on, I had to put them in the oven. So we baked these for an hour to two hours like they're cookies. I thought before I put these nice calipers on, I want to change the brake fluid. I don't want this dirty old fluid going through these calipers, so I'm going to change that. I went to each of the old brake calipers and I cracked the bleeder nuts free. I put my tool on it and I evacuated all that old brake fluid. And I'm topping this up with Dot 4 Super Premium High Quality Type S K Tuned Honda Brake Fluid. This thing needed to be changed, alright? This system comes with DOT 3, but DOT 4 absorbs less moisture, that's why I used it. When I seen that the brake fluid was coming out clear, I knew that all the old brake fluid was gone. Now we can pick up from where we left off. I go and spray some honey glue, spread some anti-seed so when the rotor goes on this, it's not going to stick on after if I need to change this again. Put the hold down screws in, that's good there. I have to go and prepare these new calipers. So if you see the bracket here, I'm putting some anti-seeds right there, that's where the shims are going to go. I go and put these metal shims in, make sure they click in, and that's installed correctly. So I make sure I put it on both sides, just like that. So now it's time to install the caliper bracket. And guys, while you're here and watching, please hit the subscribe button, be a part of Zilla Squad. We are already growing so much. This is gonna be a crazy, crazy series. So if you're already watching, might as well be along for the ride. Everyone that has been supporting, I thank you so much, but I don't really wanna get too sentimental and emotional because we still got work to do. So let's get on with the show. And you see here, I put anti C's right there as well, right where the shims are gonna contact the brake pads. I want these moving freely and I put both of them in. After I have both of them installed, I want to go and put the rest of the brake caliper on. This is the body of the caliper where the piston is, and this is where the brake line goes to. So I disconnect the brake line, pull out the brake line. At this point, I'm starting to like how things are looking. You know, the calipers are nice, they're popping. I just need to connect the brake line after this and uh, bleed the brakes of any air and that's it. We're pretty much done the front brakes. Then I just gotta go and tackle the rears after. So the copper washers you want set up like this. I have these brand new copper washers on both ends of the brake line. That way when I squeeze this with the bolt, it's gonna seal both ends. Make sure I got no leaks there. Tighten this with a ratchet. Now that, that's nice right there. That's the front brakes done. At this point it started raining. It was raining hard. So uh, I was like, damn. You know, just, just damn. I finished the front brakes. All I had to do the next day when it was nice and dry is uh, 
crack open the bleeder valves because since we had the brake line open there's air in the system I don't want air in the system in the brake line because air is compressible so when I step on the brakes then I will compress the air first before moving the fluid you see all those bubbles that just came out that's all air I'm telling one person in the car to pump the brakes and then hold it down and then when I open this valve all of that brake fluid gets pushed out of there I do that repeatedly like three four times until I can see that it's just fluid coming out from the bleeder valve that's how I know in that brake line there's no air and then I'm done with the front brakes at this point I just had to change the rear brakes and we we're finished and I wish it was as easy as I said it. When I spun the driver's rear wheel, I noticed that something was trying to stop it. This was the parking brake cable. I knew this was going to be a problem. This is why I ordered all four calipers anyway. Everything else is the same though. Change the rotors, the pads, the calipers, you know, you take the brake line off. But we also have to take the parking brake cable out. This was the only thing that gave me a headache, alright, because this, this was seized in there nice. So in order to start getting this cable out, I sprayed it down, opened up the uh, the caliper body so I can get the, the cable off of where it attached to the caliper. Yes! Now we have this one spot where there's a clip. There you go. This is all I had to do was get this damn e-brake cable out from this slot that goes into the caliper. All I had to do was take that out, and then I could put the new caliper on, run this e-brake cable through it, and then that was it. I wish it could just be as easy as I say it. This thing was stuck on there. I had to hit it with a hammer. I had to use a torch. I had to use a screwdriver with a hammer, try to like, you know, hit this thing in different directions to see if it moved. Use my air hammer and try to shake it. This was crazy, man. Like, you, know, you see how late it got? I had to go to work the next day. I was ready to go to bed. And then, as, as if things couldn't have gotten worse, my camera died. But I'll tell you what. My spirit didn't die. I got the job done. I knocked out both of those e-brake cables. Both of them were seized in both the calipers. I got both of them out. Mind you guys, the footage you're seeing right now is more like up to date. So it's not going to look as clean as the calipers looked when I first had them on. But regardless, everything was mint. Pull the e-brake cable. And that, that wheel's not going anywhere. So that's good. You know, I know that e-brake is engaging, especially for a manual car. You know, I need my e-brake to work. And now the wheel was spinning freely. That driver's rear wheel, we had nothing that was trying to slow it down. So uh, we got the job done. That's all that matters, you know. That, that's, that's the most satisfying thing that I love to say. We got the job done. So, yeah. We got the job done. You see this? You guys see this? You guys see the whip? We got brakes on it. Pads, rotors, calipers. Pads, rotors, calipers. We're good. Honestly, this was a big job right here. We also changed the brake fluid. Jeez. This was a job that I had to get done. There's no way I'm driving this on the road with the condition that the brakes were in. This car was sitting for too long. The body, some of you guys aren't gonna like looking at this. Also with the wing. This stuff right here, it's not really painted properly, but that's not really a big concern for me right now. Getting this all done was, was a hassle. I was just trying to make time because after work, I really only have about like two hours and you see how dark it's already getting. This is about the time I get home. Just to get this done, I had to make time with however much time I had after work and uh, we got it done. You guys see that? See the GoPro? It's time to test drive. So, uh, you know, I don't want to test drive at night. Obviously pump the brake pedal first. Brake pedal feels nice and firm. Just test the brakes out. Mmm. The brakes work. Mmm. It's way better than before. Before I had a problem where when I would be going fast and I need to come to a stop quickly, I could tell that it was like the brakes were almost not engaging fully. It was like half potential no half sending like right here already that's pretty nice you know what that's pretty nice I like that for just some remanufactured calipers that's 
That's solid. Just one time. 